Well, The Thing, Friday the 13th, A Nightmare on Elm Street, Hellraiser, Reanimator, Aliens, Poltergeist, and the first two Evil Dead movies are usually in the conversation for the best 80s horror film, so many other great 80s horror pictures don't get anywhere near the attention they deserve. And that's what we're here for today! So, with that in mind, I'm Andrew from What Culture Horror, and here are the 10 most underappreciated 80s horror movies. Number 10, The Mutilator. It's in cinemas in 1984, Buddy Cooper's The Mutilator stands out from the slasher pack for its inventive, gruesome kills and its, quite frankly, ridiculously catchy Fall Break theme song. Starting things off with a literal bang, The Mutilator opens with an unnamed wife baking a birthday cake for her husband, Big Ed, all while their son Ed Jr. polishes his old man's gun collection. Unfortunately, Ed Jr. accidentally kills his mother when one of those guns unloads, because allowing a child to mess with loaded weapons is always a smart move, and that's just as Big Ed arrives home. Bizarrely, the big man hugs his wife's corpse and offers her some bourbon before we jump ahead to Ed Jr. in college as he and his pals set off to visit the family beach house, where Big Ed, having stewed on his wife's death for years, waits to slaughter them all in some incredibly imaginative ways. Also, for fans of The Mutilator, the great news is that The Mutilator 2 is now completed filming and is seeking distribution. Ah, full break indeed. Number 9, Razorback. A good old creature feature, the big bad of 1984's Razorback is a ravenous, murderous wild boar that's tearing its way through the Australian outback. Often seen as pulling loose inspiration from the real-life tragedy that saw nine-week-old Azaria Chamberlain killed by a dingo, Razorback opens with Jake Cullen's grandson butchered by the crazed beast of the title, with some believing Jake actually killed the kiddo himself. Acquitted but still out to clear his name, Jake looks to track down his creature and is soon joined by Carl Winters, the husband of a US journalist also slaughtered by this piggy. Throw in a subplot of a questionable pet food manufacturer and that's the basis of what's a hugely enjoyable horror picture with some brilliantly lit, slightly trippy kills and tension. Interestingly, a future Academy Award winner and all-round dude, Jeff Bridges was rejected for the Carl role with him being deemed not marketable enough by producer Hal McElroy. Number 8. Night of the Demons. Hosting the party in an abandoned funeral home on Halloween night and carrying out a seance there, yeah, what could possibly go wrong? That's the loose premise of 1988's Night of the Demons, where some wasted high schoolers end up terrorised by a demonic presence that possesses them, but only usually after the person has been killed by this demon. Sure, it's full of plentiful cliches of the genre and of the time, but Kevin S. Tenney's Night of the Demons is a fun, somewhat silly picture that features some great great effects work, including the memorable visual of that lipstick trick by Linnea Quigley's Suzanne. Number 7. Happy Birthday to Me Not only is the 80s synonymous with slasher movies, but it's synonymous with slasher movies that features some truly insane plot twists. Step forward, happy birthday to me. Released in 1981, the focus here is on Ginny Wainwright, a member of her prestigious school's elite top 10 group who's on the cusp of her 18th birthday. But wouldn't you know it, Ginny's friends are killed off just as she suffers conveniently timed blackouts. How far will Ginny go to ring in her birthday in style? And is Ginny the person behind these brutal murders? The answer is yes. Well, kind of. Happy Birthday to Me ends with Ginny celebrating her birthday with her dead friends, her mother's dug up corpse, and she even slices her old man's throat, before a bonkers twist that, even now, 43 years later, is one that's too good to risk spoiling here. Number 6. Critters. One of the main reasons Critters is so underappreciated is down to a certain 1984 film featuring Billy Peltzer and some Mogwai. Released two years after Gremlins and featuring some tiny, toothy, somewhat cute little creatures, clearly there are some similarities between Critters and Gremlins, but Critters was actually in development before Gremlins, meaning it's not quite the Gremlins ripoff some lazily label it as. Again, Critters isn't an all time classic, but Stephen Herrick's 1986 feature is a whole bunch of dumb fun, with some great creature designs, some smart death sequences, a deliciously devilish sense of humour, and anchored by some pitch-perfect performances from D. Wallace, M. Emmett Walsh, and the ever-great, ever-brilliant Lynn Shea. Number 5. Stage Fright Michele Suave's Stage Fright deserves a spot on this list solely for the film's bizarre opening sequence, but even that aside, this 1987 effort manages to bring a genuine sense of dread while still not taking itself too seriously. As 
as for that opening, why the villainous Night Owl ambushes a sex worker and we hear her curdled, terrified screams as the locals stir and check what's happened. So far, so very much formulaic slasher opening. Then, completely out of left field, the Night Owl dives out of a dark alley and breaks into a snazzy dance routine as we learn that what we've watched is a rehearsal for a musical based on the Night Owl killer. Unknown to the production's cast and crew though, a deranged former actor has escaped an asylum and soon sports a Night Owl outfit as they slice and dice their way through the locked in theatre setting. Number 4 Prince of Darkness my personal all-time favourite director. One John Carpenter movie often overlooked is 1987's Prince of Darkness. It may not be quite at the level of Carpenter's very best work, but Prince of Darkness deserves way more love than it gets. Pulling inspiration from the Quatermass series, with Carpenter even crediting himself as Martin Quatermass on the screenplay, Prince of Darkness has the legendary Donald Pleasance taking centre stage as a priest who comes face to face with Satan. Well, kind of, for Satan is an eerie green liquid canister found in a church basement. With assistance from physics professor Howard Barak, played by Big Trouble and Little China's Victor Wong no less, Pleasant's priest has to deal with creepy sex, portals hidden in mirrors, and a slice of social commentary built around the AIDS epidemic. Like other Carpenter classics, adding to the brilliance here is some phenomenal SFX work, shocking visuals, and plenty of the director's patented tension building. Plus, it's always a good time whenever Donald Pleasant gets to deliver some intense erratic monologues, of course. Number 3. Pieces Directed by Juan Piquet Simon, 1982's Pieces opens with 10-year-old Timmy murdering his mother with an axe after she caught him with a jigsaw puzzle of a naked lady. Very logical behaviour. Ever the conniving little prick, Timmy hides in a closet until the police arrive, then pretends to be a traumatised witness to his mother's death. Jumping ahead 40 years, the film switches focus to a Boston college campus in the middle of a murder spree, where the victims have certain body parts removed to form a twisted human jigsaw, hence the pieces of the title. What makes pieces particularly great is the whodunit mystery running through it. It's made pretty clear that the present day killer is the adult Timmy, but we don't know which character is actually the real Timmy. As a bonus, pieces also has a bonkers final reveal of a wiggly, jiggly, stitched together, mishmash corpse, a corpse that somehow managed just to rip the crotch of one of our characters to uh, pieces. Number two, Pumpkinhead. Those who know, know. Pumpkinhead is an absolute delight. Granted, some presume that with a name like Pumpkinhead, this Stan Winston 1988 movie has to be mindless trash, but that is far from the case. Here, Lance Henriksen devours scenery as Ed Harley, a widow whose young son is accidentally killed by some dirt bike riding young adults. With revenge on his mind, Ed tracks down an eerie witch with the intention of her resurrecting the creature he once saw as a boy, a creature known as Pumpkinhead. A quick bit of great digging and a sprinkling of magic later, et voila, Pumpkinhead is back in business and carrying out Ed's mission of vengeance, but at the cost of Ed's own physical well-being and his dwindling sanity. Until this point, Stan Winston was known as an Oscar-winning special effects legend with the likes of The Thing, The Entity, The Terminator and Aliens to his name. But so impressed with Pumpkinhead's script was he, Winston chose to make his directorial debut with this film, and the end result is pretty darn magical. Number 1. Killer Clowns from Outer Space some might lambast killer clowns from outer space as too daft, too ridiculous, too cheesy, and just, well, a bit naff. To those people, if you embrace the insanity and bizarreness of killer clowns, it's an absolute treat. Clearly, this is far from the chin-stroking elevated horror that people may talk about, but this 1988 Kyoto Brothers picture is a fantastic popcorn horror movie where you can just switch your brain off and be entertained by the crazed nature of clown-looking aliens, complete with a circus tent-shaped spaceship, an array of classic clown-themed attacks, and a cotton candy-esque cocooning of their victims. Throw in some charming special effects work and a banging theme tune by the Dickies, and the overall package of killer clowns from outer space reeks of imagination creativity and a general warm hug of nostalgia, both in terms of being a very 80s movie and also reminding us that sometimes horror doesn't have to be all po-faced and super serious. Is Killer Clowns from Outer Space a little goofy? Absolutely, but that's part of the appeal. Now, if only June could get here already so that we could play Killer Clowns from Outer Space, the game. 